Hello, I'm Nobby Clark, welcome to my workshop. Um, I had an inquiry uh, from one of my subscriber viewers um, asking about the, um, the motor I use for the power feed on uh, my milling machine. So uh, rather than send back a lengthy reply, I thought I'd make this little video just to show you um, the, the power feed itself and how I fitted it to the machine and perhaps a little bit more detail about the motor itself. Um, I'll bring you in um, a little bit closer so, uh, so you can see the, the, the setup in, in detail. Bear with me just a moment. This is the uh, setup I used um, to drive the, uh, the hand wheel here. I made two gears. Um, there's a large gear here uh, which is actually attached to the hand wheel itself. Um, this is um, about 62mm in diameter and it's a, a 60 tooth gear. And on the motor there's um, another gear here which is um, about 32mm in diameter and that's a 30 tooth gear. Um, I could have, I guess, bought the gears um, and then modified them to fit the hand wheel and the motor, but um, I did some searches. I mean, to buy gears of, of this size, I mean, they were quite expensive. And initially, this was a bit of an experiment because I didn't really know whether this would actually work. So I decided to make the gears myself. And I've already put up a video or a couple of videos on the setup uh, for making these gears on uh, my Myford lathe. So you can look back if you like to, to see in how I made them and what the setup was. Um, the motor, which I'm going to remove here, it's held on with a little uh, Allen screw here, if I take that out. So that fits to the um, the plate here um, on the end of the um, the mill bed, and this is the the, the motor itself. Um, these are um, fractional motors. Um, that you can find them on um, eBay. Um, I actually bought this motor quite a number of years ago because when I bought the milling machine, um, after using it for quite a long time. Um, and you find it sort of for certain operations very tedious having to wind the the bed backwards and forwards uh, if you've got a lot of machining to do so I had the idea of, um, of perhaps making um, a cross feed system for it the system a lot of people use is to um, use um, a windscreen wiper motor that seems to be a very, very common thing used, and some people buy um, these little uh, motors that you use on CNC uh, machines as well. So there's quite a number of ways of doing it. Um, often the ones I've seen have, have been operated um, through um, a sort of a clutch system from the motor to the... Um, uh, the lead screw of the, the milling machine, uh, some of them with a belt. Um, I opted for a gear system. I, I saw an, an, another YouTuber make a, a system like this using this sort of motor. Um, so I thought, you know, I'll give it a try. So I mean, I had this motor for quite a long time before I actually used it. Now, um, it has a label on the motor, which you should better read all the details here. It's a little DC uh, it says deer motor but it means gear motor and it operates uh, on 12 volts DC and it's a hundred rpm motor so you can you can see the details there um, there's lots of um, options on these motors um, if you look on eBay um, in I think different voltage and different um, rpms so you need to choose a motor that's going to 
do the job for you, you know, sort of what you want. Um, to fit this um, to the milling machine, I, I made up a, a stainless steel plate, uh, which I had to make some uh, drilled holes in the back to clear uh, some of the little uh, mouldings on, on the back, back part of the motor itself. Um, the gear on this one um, is held on with a little keyway and the gear on the uh, handle here is held on you see there's a little tiny set screw that holds that in position um, so that the the way this is used is um originally I, I, I had the motor I don't know if you can see there's a little hole here it was mounted on this side so that the the motor would just drop down onto the gear um i had to move the position because when i fitted the dro system to um the milling machine um to fit the scale um the well the scale would have been in the way of the motor or vice versa so i had to change the position and i used uh, one of the uh, screw positions that holds this end plate onto the bed of the mill. Uh, let's see if I can get that back on again. And then to the screw hole there and refit that on. So the the way to use it is that you just slacken off the, the little uh, screw here and bring the motor around and gear in contact to the gear on the hand wheel and then just simply lock that in place. Now to, to operate the, um, the motor that you need some sort of control system because uh, obviously uh, running 12 volts straight to the motor um, it's going to run too far so you obviously um, you, you, you in addition to needing the gears you need some means of controlling the speed of the motor so in addition to buying the motor I bought I if I can get this in in front of the there we are I hope you can see that this little um control board I've just mounted it in a box so it doesn't get filled with uh, chips and oil and you can run all the wires in the the wire which goes to the motor and the wire to the power supply. The power supply for this one, I went to um, a recycling center and I found a 12 volt DC power supply that was used in the, one of these uh, kids um, video games. Uh, I don't know what, what it was. It was a <laughs> very, very cheap. I think the power supply cost me two pounds, which I thought was very reasonable. Um, when you buy this little uh, control board, it comes with a rocker switch here, which will control the movement left or right, and a control here, speed control. So uh, we've got power on. There's a little, uh, if you see, a little in indicator light down here shows that it's on. Um, so that's in position. It's locked in. So if I switch on. And of course in its running position also you can alter the speed as well. Now for, for most operations um, I tend to use it, 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 it at its high speed setting. Um, but this is you know depends on um, you know what you're doing and sort of how, how you want the result to be basically um uh so you obviously you can choose uh, uh the appropriate motor for basically for what you want and one question was is what the torque of the motor is i've no idea um i don't think that it it, it gave that information um, on the ebay listing but if you switch the motor on and try to hold the gear, you can't stop the motor with your fingers. Um, the, 
the uh, proof that it works basically which which I wasn't sure about until I got it all set up and on the machine and then tested it was testing it um, cutting material with a fly cutter and a, a milling cutter and it worked fine I, I was surprised and delighted how well it worked because I wasn't sort of that confident that it was going to gonna actually do the job at all but um, I did subsequently buy another motor uh, which I've not used but um, I've taken the I can get this in front of the camera I've taken this one off the um, if I can get that in front of the camera so you can you can see that so that's the the the, the motor itself and it it has a, a tiny gearbox inside you see uh, it's covered in the well, gloopy oil. We want to make the, the the oil seems to. Well, I think this is because it's probably got a bit warm in the workshop in the summer. It, it the oil's moved around a bit, but you do need to move the, the this sort of well, it's grease actually to move it around so it's it's covering all the the, the gear wheels in here. This one was um, gained 12 volt, but this is a 30 rpm motor. Um, I think this would have just been far too slow for. Uh, the operation here and um, I think when I bought this I had some other plan for this which I can't now remember exactly what it was but I've just kept this one I mean, when I bought these um, items they were were actually um, quite inexpensive at the time um, I did have a another look at the the cost things of these actually some time ago obviously all prices are going up all the time so this obviously is, is more expensive uh, to buy now, but compared to what the cost would be in buying a dedicated uh, power feed for a milling machine, <laughs> this was a very, very cheap option. Um, I'm not sure for my mini mill whether there is um, a power feed available for it. Um, the, the company that import this particular milling machine I couldn't find one on on their website for the this the, the this is a XJ12 mini mill. I couldn't find one for this, but some of the bigger milling machines they do um, do have power feeds available for them, and some of them are supplied with the power feed fitted. So that's a sort of another option. Um, now, obviously, to control the. the, the again the the operating speed of course you can play around with different ratios for the gears um the option i mean here it's uh uh, uh a 30 tooth and a 60 tooth gear um, but you could sort of play around with um, perhaps different gears here to to change the, the speed range for you along with using the, the speed controller board so you know, lots of options uh, on on doing this. Um, I put um, you can, if I just lift the camera up slightly, you can see here I put um, a little sleeve over here um, to try and stop um, any chips really going down the top and getting onto the contacts of the uh, the little, little motor itself. Um, it's not really, I don't think, it's been a, a particular problem, but that. I thought it sort of might help. I mean, I used the the power feed quite a lot. Um, you know, some operations I, I do on the the milling machine, I, I don't bother to use the power feed, so it's not used all the time. But um, it's there when I need it. So, when well, I hope you've you, you found that that interesting. When I have shown um, this. I think a couple of times before in my videos in fact my the first video I ever did on YouTube uh, just over a year ago was all the upgrades that I did to the, the mini mill and I, I mentioned this perhaps not in um, such great detail um, but showing uh, how I cut the gears I and mean, when I had to use a, a poor man's method to cut them um, I made a, a tool to uh, sort of shear the, the the gears into shape which is perhaps not the ideal way of making them but um, rather than buying sort of quite expensive uh, 
gear cutters I thought that was an option and as I said not really knowing that this would even work uh, it was the other thought really in, in doing it that way and of course making the gears was a, a very very interesting interesting project as well and I, mean, I quite enjoyed doing that although <laughs> cutting total 90 uh, uh, little gear teeth was a uh, rather tedious and I had to have several uh, breaks in between cutting them but you, you'll see that in, in one of my earlier videos if, if you want to look back so there we are I mean I hope um, that's uh, uh, been of interest to you well there we are and I hope you did find that uh, interesting to see uh, the setup um, that I've done here I and mean, if you have any other sort of questions on it you know please do ask me through the comments and I'll do my best to, to answer them for you um, it's very cold in the workshop today it's um, about 10 degrees um, we keep it in in the house um, a sensor which gives us uh, temperatures in a couple of parts of the house and one of the sensors I keep in the workshop so I can monitor the temperatures out here I did find when I came in the workshop this morning, this is a Sunday morning, um, but um, the top of my mill vice, although it was covered up, did have some flash rusting on the, um, the fix the moving jaw main part, fortunately not the, uh, the actual jaws themselves, so I've, I've already given that a bit of a clean up, so I'm going to have to make sure that's covered in some nice thick oil before I go out and I'm going to check um, all the other machines in the workshop you know well it's a big problem really um, during the winter time because um, of the extreme dampness in the workshop and I have to sort of make sure everything's uh, covered up in the workshop uh, in between usages so uh, it's going to be a little bit of extra work for me after I finish this video Anyway, again, thanks for joining me in the workshop and also thanks for all the uh, lovely comments I've, I've been receiving and sort of questions as well, which are, it is nice to be able to, to answer this, this particular way. And, and also thanks to all the subscribers to the channel. Uh, the numbers are um, creeping up quite nicely. Now. And if you've not subscribed, well, please do. Let's, let's try and get the numbers up, you know. Um, It'd be rather nice, although I think impossible, but it'd be lovely if I could get the subscribers up to near a thousand by Christmas. Whether it's possible, I, I don't really know, but fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Anyway, thanks for joining me again, and I have a, hopefully have another video for you very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.